Hi, I'm Gary Semmings. Welcome to Techniques Video 3, The Art of Jumping and Whoops. In Techniques Video 1, we covered all the techniques for every condition. Techniques Video 2 covers a rider and motorcycle making the two become one. In Techniques Video 3, you'll learn what it takes to have control and be confident in the air. I've worked closely with Supercross sensation Jeremy McGrath, and now I'm working with the Boyson Yamaha team, consisting of Scott Sheep, John Dowd, and Dag Boyson. If I can help the pros in their racing efforts, I must be doing something right. I don't tell you this to impress you. I tell you this to impress upon you the fact that you too can benefit from the information contained in this video, the other training materials that I produce, and the schools themselves. I didn't stop learning when I stopped racing. I continue to learn and stay current from the top riders as the sport progresses. You can be sure that the information contained in this tape is the same techniques and fundamentals used by the fastest riders on the planet. Why are these riders so fast? Well, one reason is that they can do all the techniques and fundamentals perfectly and naturally without even thinking about it. But first, they had to think about it. As a matter of fact, that's about all they had to think about for a long, long time. Practice, practice, practice. You have to put your time in on the bike. Now, through my motocross schools, I've noticed that all riders really want to get some big air and do the doubles and triples. They want to get some serious air time without screwing themselves into the ground upon landing. <laughs> And this video will show you how the pros make getting that big air look so easy. There are many factors that go into jumping and whoops. We're going to cover both jumping and whoops together because depending on the design and condition of the obstacles, these factors are very similar for both. With the high tech of today's machines, jumping is going a step further to actually flying that motorcycle. But before you get to the flight stage, you have to master the techniques and fundamentals of the motorcycle's most exciting element, getting air. The most important factors that go into jumping and whoops are approach speed, clutch and throttle control, rear brake control, body movements, compression and rebound, foot placement on the foot pegs, We'll be covering each of these six factors throughout the video, but first, here's a brief description of each. Approach speed. This means carrying the correct amount of speed and momentum when you compress into the jump and rebound into the air up there. It also means whether you're speeding up or slowing down when you hit the jump. Clutch and throttle control as you compress and rebound. Clutch and throttle control means timing and control with the clutch and or throttle to determine your height and distance of your flight and whether the front end is low or high throughout your flight and landing. This attitude or angle of the motorcycle through flight can be slightly adjusted with the rear brake, throttle, and body movements, but by far the biggest part of this control is initiated upon compression and rebound as you take off. Rear brake control. You can drag the rear brake as you compress and rebound when you want to slow down and get back on the ground fast. Body movements. This deals with the timing and movements of your body from a low center of gravity during compression and rebound. This means your body movements pivot from either the foot pegs or the seat. Compression and rebound. Weighting and unweighting the bike. This deals with the weight change of your body and motorcycle. It's kind of like what goes down must come up. And all this weight comes up as you and your motorcycle are parting with dear mother earth. Foot placement on the foot pegs. This is an important technique to be aware of because if you're not doing this simple technique correctly, it could hold you back from moving your body position to the front of the motorcycle. This technique deals with either riding with the balls of your feet or the arches of your feet on the foot pegs. So there you have a brief description of the six most important factors relating to jumps and whoops. 
Now we're going to show you how these factors are used. Not only are we going to show you how they're used, we'll show you how to learn and perfect them. In this tape and in my motocross schools, I may say certain things over and over again. This is because not only are they important, but also in order to learn and master them, you need to think about and practice them over and over again. That's why it's so effective to practice each technique separately. But first, it's necessary to have the proper attitude for learning these techniques. Jumping is one of the most difficult techniques to learn. This is because you're either jumping or you're not. You can't go halfway. You can't jump and keep one foot on the ground at the same time. Therefore, it's important to progress from your current level and not try things that you're not ready for. When you have the feeling and confidence of total control, you'll know what you can jump and what you shouldn't attempt. The riders you see getting big air and doing doubles and triples have years of experience. So be smart and use your head. You have to do a whole lot of practice to get the feeling and confidence. That's why it's so effective to practice each technique separately in a controlled drill. Then you can practice it the right way repeatedly, over and over, driving it deeper and deeper into your nervous system. The best way to do this is by frequency training, training often for shorter periods of time. It's much better to practice every day for an hour or two than once a week for eight hours straight. When you can do all the proper techniques perfectly at race speed, then you can spend more time riding the whole track. It's still okay to do motos on the track and even do some play riding, but mix it up. Make sure you're learning the proper techniques. Through my nine years of instructing motocross schools, it's been proven time and time again that this strategy is by far the fastest way to improve. You have to put your time in on the bike and you have to use that time wisely. You see, it's more difficult and it takes more concentration to train new reflexes. It's easier to do what you already know how to do. But if you really want to improve, you'll have to put in that extra effort. You have to be patient and commit yourself to learning the right way. And this takes time. So if it doesn't work for you in the first two minutes, keep trying. That's one big difference between the winners and the losers. The winners never give up. If you get fed up and frustrated, get away from it for a while and try again the next day, and the next day, and the next, and the next, until you can do it. Okay, so now that we have that straight, let's get back to jumping and whoops. Remember, the amount of air that you can get directly relates to how well you can execute and control the six factors. Let's start with number one. Approach speed. As far as approach speed is concerned, you want to be carrying the right amount of speed and momentum into the jump so you can take the jump smoothly and land where you want to land. Sometimes you'll have a short distance approaching a jump out of a corner or from another obstacle, and you may have to be accelerating hard all the way in order to get enough speed up. Other times you may be carrying a lot of speed into a jump and need to slow down in order to take the jump. In this case, you'll be braking on the approach. You may even be braking all the way off the jump. When you hit the face of the jump with the brakes on, it really slows you down a lot. You can use this technique to get that last bit of speed scrubbed off just before you leave the ground. Either way, you need to be able to control your speed and momentum on the approach so you have the right amount of speed and momentum you need when you leave the jump. Clutch and throttle control. When jumping, you can use the clutch and throttle as your rocket launcher. This is because a pro rider can control the exact amount of power to the rear wheel with the clutch and throttle upon compressing into the jump in order to control the launch out of the jump, which in effect will determine his height and distance. If you're just starting out, it may be too difficult to time the use of the clutch and throttle together. In this case, just work on your throttle control. When you get that down, you can begin to put the clutch and throttle together. 
learn to use one or two fingers on the clutch. You have to be able to use the clutch accurately and hold on to the grip at the same time. When you're using the clutch and throttle together, it's much more noticeable if your timing is off. On the other hand, it's much more effective when your timing is on. With a lot of practice, your timing will be on automatically. It will be ingrained into your nervous system, a reflex reaction. Rear brake control. When jumping or doing whoops, the rear brake is like your magnet to the ground. This is because when you're controlling the rear brake, as you compress and rebound, the braking force will not only slow you down, it will also hold the rebound dampening of the suspension together, which will slow it down and keep you closer to the ground throughout your flight. This effect is also why the rear brake keeps the rear end of the bike from kicking up as much in big bumps. It holds the rebound dampening of the shock together and slows it down. I use the term controlling the rear brake because just like all the controls, it's necessary to have a sensitive, controlled feeling for the brake. It's no good to just crudely stomp on and off the pedal. You have to develop a feeling of total control. Body movements. Motocross is a motion sport and therefore your body should be in constant motion in order to go with the flow and be in the right place at the right time. Timing is crucial. The more precise you are with your timing, the less effort you'll have to put into big body movements, but you still have to be constantly moving to some degree. When jumping, one very important force that your movements have to be timed with is the force that can throw the front end of the motorcycle down as the rear wheel leaves the jump. When the front wheel compresses into the jump, it drives the rear wheel down into the jump even more. Then as the front wheel leaves the jump, the rear suspension is still loaded. Now you have no weight on the front end as the rear end rebounds and leaves the jump. The natural laws of the universe are going to make you endo or at least land on the handlebars unless you compensate with the timing of your clutch and or throttle and body movements. There are three pivot points in which your body is attached to the motorcycle. Your body movements should pivot from one of these three points at a time. These three points are foot pegs, the front part of the seat where your knees squeeze when standing, the seat when sitting. Many times you will be changing through these three pivot points so fluently that it's almost like you're using a combination of all three. When you want to hang onto the bike and you're not moving very much, it helps a lot to squeeze it with your knees. When you are moving, let your knees slide along the sides of the bike. Very sh seldom should there be any space between your knees and the motorcycle. You should not wait or pivot from the handlebars. This is because you want to maintain a low center of gravity and leave your upper body free to go with the flow of the motorcycle so you can maintain the center of balance by being in the right place at the right time. This is very difficult if you're supporting your weight in your arms. Support your weight in your legs. For control through the whoops and jumping, you need to have a good freedom of movement while standing. You need to be able to perform a good rowing action over the motorcycle. It should be easy for you to move from the very front to the very rear of the bike. When you're not going through your full range of motion, you need to be able to work with the motorcycle from the front, rear, and of course the center. However you're moving or from wherever you're working the bike, you need to move and work from one of these three pivot points. Compression and rebound. When it's necessary to get back on the ground quickly and keep your flight projection low, you want to absorb the compression and rebound part of the jump with your body movements. In this case, as you approach the compression part of the jump, you need to be extended tall over the front part of the motorcycle. Then, as the motorcycle hits the jump, you absorb the compression by rowing back and down with your body movements. The energy of the compression and therefore the rebound is absorbed through your body movement which results in a low flight projection. This will allow you to cover jumps at higher speeds and get back on the ground faster and smoother. This is the same technique to use when landing hard on flat ground. 
After you take off, move your body position forward, then accelerate and row back as you land to absorb the impact. This way you're helping the suspension absorb the landing. It's just the opposite technique when you need more height and distance to clear certain obstacles. In this case, you want to use your body weight to help compress the suspension into the compression part of the jump and lift your weight out of the compression on the rebound part of the jump. You're weighting and unweighting the motorcycle. When you want more height and distance, you intensify the compression and the rebound part of the jump. You do this by sticking your body weight into the foot pegs and sometimes the seat when the motorcycle compresses and then you lift your body weight out of the motorcycle as it rebounds. It's kind of like a bunny hop, weight and unweight. Timing is important. Keep in mind that the direction or angle of your body position as it lifts out of the motorcycle, whether it's forward or back, is going to have an effect on the way the motorcycle flies through the air and lands, whether the front end is low or high. A similar technique is used when you pre-jump over something. You determine where you want the motorcycle to leave the ground and you compress and lift at that point. Sometimes at slow speeds, it's preferred to remain sitting on the seat in order to compress the suspension more on the compression part of the jump. When sitting, you can spike the suspension harder than when you're standing because there's nowhere for your body weight to go but straight down into the bike. When standing, your legs will always absorb some of the compression even if you don't want them to. So sitting is a little more effective. When jumping while sitting, your upper body movement would pivot from the seat. But be aware that this technique only works on certain types of conditions, usually right out of a turn at slow speeds. If you hit something big and fast, you wouldn't be able to move far enough over the bike, and you may endo. In, even if you save it, you could still leave some chili in your shorts. <laughs> How did Poindexter get in here? Oh well, we'll use him to show some of the mistakes. And he thinks he's so smooth. Foot placement on the foot pegs. It's surprising how many riders don't have a clue as to what part of their foot is on the peg. A good way to find out how you've been doing it is to inspect the bottom of your boots. Where the most wear is, is where you've been riding most often. If you can't see any wear on the bottom of your boots, you better check the bottom of your pants. In the latter case, you may consider standing more. There are certain advantages to either of these two foot positions. The advantages to riding with the balls of your feet on the pegs are, you're adding another joint to your body suspension, your ankle joint. This also makes you taller and gives you more range of motion. It gives you a better feeling and more control through the whoops and certain types of jumps. It's easier to move your body position forward because your feet will miss the brake and shift levers more easily. When going through soft ground or ruts, you have more ground clearance so your feet won't get injured or ripped off the foot pegs. However, don't let your heels go down too far below the pegs. They could hit the ground in ruts and wipe your feet off the pegs before you realize that your butt is on the seat. Riding with the balls of your feet on the pegs is not a good idea when landing hard from a jump. This is because your heels will go down so far and hard that you could sprain or break your ankles. The advantages to riding with the arches of your feet on the pegs are, you can shift and use the brake. You can land harder without injuring your ankles. You're down into the bike a little lower, which allows you to be able to squeeze it more effectively with your legs and stay attached to it better. You can get a better spiking action to weight the motorcycle on the compression part of a hard-hitting jump for more height and distance. When riding with the arches of your feet on the pegs, you have to tilt your toes out a bit in order to keep from hitting the shifter or brake. This is also true when you want to move your body position forward. When you want to use the shifter or brake, simply move the front part of your foot in, over or under the lever. When you're finished, move it back out. 
it's important to develop a good feeling for this so you can do it comfortably and accurately at all times. You don't want to hit the brake or especially the shifter by accident. If you would happen to knock the shifter in between gears into a false neutral on the compression part of a jump, you may take a soil sample by way of an endo over the handlebars. This is because you won't have any power to launch you out of the compression part of the jump. You may think that you're going to have power, but realize that you don't after it's too late. Most of the time, you'll be doing a lot of changing from the balls of your feet to the arches of your feet. Certain sections of the track will be better for each. You have to be able to ride either way and make the necessary changes as you ride. How do you do this? Practice, practice, practice. You have to put your time in on that motorcycle. And remember, practice each technique separately in a stationary position and the setup drill situation. When you can do it perfectly every time in these easy practice conditions, you'll be able to do it naturally on the track at race speed. There you have the six most important factors relating to jumps and whoops. But before we go any further, I want to cover the different types of jumps and whoops and the different ways to take them. Depending on the design of the whoop section, there are three basic ways to take them. Compressing and jumping through the troughs of the whoops, front wheel placement, hammering the whoops. Sometimes a combination of two or even all three techniques can be used, but first, let's look at each one separately. Compressing and jumping through the troughs of the whoops. This technique can be used when the whoops are pretty big and far enough apart for the wheelbase of the bike to compress and jump through the troughs of the whoops. You do this with a rhythm. You want to land smoothly at the beginning of the trough with the front wheel first so you can compress, flow through, and launch out of the trough. Front wheel placement. This is a very useful technique when you want to carry the front wheel over some whoops that you can't quite jump. It's like doing a controlled wheelie and timing the exact place where you want the front wheel to come down. Where you set the front wheel down is very important in order to link together what you're going to do next. While you're wheeling over the tops of these whoops with the rear wheel hitting off the tops of them, you'll have to control the motorcycle mostly with throttle control and body movements. Hammering the whoops. This technique is the fastest when the whoops are fairly close together. You want to keep your speed up so your wheels stay on the tops of the whoops and don't fall in the holes. Keep the front wheel very light and try to float it across the tops of the whoops. Your body position will have to be a little back as you work the bike. You have to keep the throttle on and maintain acceleration the whole time to pull this one off. Don't let your front wheel get too high because it may slam down hard and auger you in. When riding through whoops, it's very important to look far ahead up through the whoop section, if possible even at the end of them. This way you can predetermine and time your next moves. You can get a rhythm and flow which will allow you to carry a lot of speed, but beware, riding across whoops at high speeds is definitely advanced stuff. If you make a mistake at this speed, you could be doing a head plant before you can say what happened. Now that we have that all covered, here are some more important tips to keep in mind in order to make it all come together and work for you. Maintaining the ability to adjust the motorcycle from side to side. Whenever you're riding the motorcycle, you have to be able to move the motorcycle and your body from side to side in order to make the front wheel go exactly where you want it to go. This is especially true in ruts approaching a jump. While the motorcycle is approaching, compressing, and rebounding from the jump, it's necessary to be in the exact line you want and be perfectly balanced. Without this balance and control, you wouldn't be able to control your jump. The way to get this control is to practice the proper upper body movements from side to side. You want to keep your elbows up and move your shoulders parallel across the motorcycle. This type of movement allows you to make the adjustments you need and still maintain the center of balance. Setting up your line for the jump. Being prepared before you get there. In order to make a good jump, you have to be set up on the right line as you approach the jump. 
you have to predetermine your approach line before you even get there. Know exactly where you want to be so you have control and confidence as you approach your takeoff area. You, you don't want to be making last millisecond adjustments when you're about to compress and launch. What you're focusing your vision on. While you're riding, you should always be looking at and concentrating on the next most important object coming up. This is like scanning the ground and focusing and dealing with the next important object. Once you're about to deal with that object, you can scan and focus on the next and so on. With a lot of practice, your vision will develop to such a level that even at high speeds, you'll notice every distinction in the track before you pass over it. Every rock, bump, hole, square edge, rut, etc. Always look far enough ahead to set up your lines and be ready before you even get there. When jumping, you should set yourself up on the right approach line. Then look ahead at the compression part of the jump. Then, as soon as possible, look at the part of the jump where the motorcycle is going to leave the ground. If possible, right after that point, look ahead to where you want to land. Many times you'll be able to do all of this before the motorcycle leaves the ground. This way you'll have time to adjust your jumping distance so you can be more accurate in hitting your landing target. On shorter face jumps and whoops, the compression part of the jump will be the same place that you leave the ground. So right when you compress, you need to be ready to launch. On these shorter face jumps, it's easier to look ahead a little earlier at your landing target. This is especially important when doing a series of jumps through a set of whoops. The clicker, getting sideways. You didn't think I was gonna leave this part out, did you? Don't try this at home. Unless you can do all the basic techniques and fundamentals very well and you have control and confidence jumping. The most important aspect of the clicker happens again when the motorcycle compresses and rebounds off the jump. You have to set yourself up so as the motorcycle rebounds, you can lean, turn the bike, and use your hips to throw the bike sideways. You have to maintain the center of balance at all times with your body positions. How you initiate your takeoff will determine how the bike is going to fly through the air. Then you adjust the angles with your body from the center of balance. Straighten the bike up and gas it just before you land in order to accelerate and pull straight on your landing. Definitely start out small and work your way up on this one. You'll feel it when you have control. Starting out small and perfecting the technique separately. If you already have a lot of jumping experience, or even if you're at the pro level, with the proper understanding and practice, these factors and techniques can help you progress from your current skill level. If you're just starting out or have very little or no jumping experience, these techniques can get you started safely while making smooth progress. If you are just starting out, find or build a safe little jump with a good takeoff and landing area. Don't worry about how much height and your distance you're getting. Just practice the six factors. Work on and think about each one of the six factors separately. Get the feeling of each of the factors by practicing them repeatedly in this easy practice situation. You want the jump to be effective but safe. So you can really concentrate on the techniques you're learning. If the jump is too difficult for your skill level, you'll spend more of your attention on just making the jump and you won't be able to perfect the techniques. If you were learning how to ride a unicycle, you wouldn't start out on a 12-footer. Repetition is a mother of skill. If you do something over and over again, you're going to get good at it. Just make sure you're doing it over and over again the right way. When you're practicing, you're actually training your nervous system to do automatically what you're practicing. You're training your sensitivity, reflex reaction, and feeling. This is why bad habits take some time and effort to break. They're programmed into your nervous system. If you have bad habits, you may have to do some reprogramming. Either way, you'll be surprised how fast you can progress with these practice strategies. Through years of dedication and training, when you finally reach that total flow concentration level where human and machine blend into one, you'll know there's nothing better under the sun. Hang on, there's still more to come. 
I'd like to thank the Blackburns for letting us use their racetrack here in Reddick, Florida to film this video. They hold some of the best motocross races in Florida. To get on their mailing list or for general information, you can call Ken or Carol Blackburn at 904-591-2377. Hi, I'm Gary Semix. I've had a passion for motocross my entire life, first as a racer and now as a coach and trainer. If you're watching this, obviously you have seen at least one of my videos. I thought you might like to know what other titles I've produced and what I have in the works for the near future. Techniques video number one, all the techniques for every condition. In this video, you'll learn all the basic techniques for all the various conditions in motocross. Techniques video number two, the rider and motorcycle making the two become one. Video two combines all the techniques into the two most important fundamentals and shows you ways to practice them. These two fundamentals show you how to always maintain the center of balance and master the use of all five controls. Techniques video number three, the art of jumping in whoops. Not only will you learn, but you'll also be entertained with major air and cross-ups from some of the best racers in the business. This video will also show you how to practice and master all the aspects of jumping and whoops. Techniques video number four, how to develop the pro style. Most of this video was shot in the winter of 1996 in Southern California while I was training Jeremy McGrath. Techniques video number five, what to do on race day. In this video, you'll see a lot of action from the local level to the pro national level. What to do on race day gives you the steps to follow in order to race at your highest potential. Techniques video number six, eliminating arm pump. I have developed a forearm training workout that trains the muscles in the same way that they're used when you ride. You'll see and learn a simple, easy to do forearm workout program that will condition your arms for motocross. Techniques video number seven, all about cornering. This video will show you the most effective ways to practice in order to improve your cornering speed and control. Techniques video number eight, bike setup. This video covers all the important adjustments that every bike needs. You will gain speed and confidence when all the components of your motorcycle are set up properly. The Evolution of Motocross video shows the history of this great sport from 1949 through 1995. The Motocross Practice Manual, an easy reference manual to make sure you're practicing correctly. Don't go to practice without it. All of the 47 absolute techniques of motocross are described and illustrated for easy reference. And don't forget, all of my videos are available on VHS or DVD. That's what is currently available. I also have a lot more in the works that will be available in the near future, like a training and diet video and the Gary Semex Motocross Techniques video series volume 2. I just started a new branch of my business called Semex Motocross Industries and we're currently working on a very unique piece of exercise equipment called the Semex Forearm Developer. Semex Motocross Industries has plans to develop an entire line of 
motocross exercise equipment. For more information and updates, check out my website at gsmxs.com. And remember, all my videos are also available on DVD. With a team of franchise instructors worldwide, the Gary Semex Motocross School is also easily accessible. GSMXS spells success, and you will become a better rider.